Can the show's going to come on? Yes. He's trying to get on now. Yeah. 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 Hi. Yes. Um, oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, Michael did put it up there uh, on the uh, on our hundred thousand poets Toronto page. Okay. He did put the Zoom meeting up there. Oh, so is that all So is this there? Michelle? I can't hear her. Are you talking? Okay. No. I am now. All right. <laughs> and you uh, can't see us, right? Or can you? I can see uh, somebody sitting down. Oh, you can see me? That's me. I'm going to get some more light. Can you see? actually see the gallery? Can you see me? Yes, I see you. Yeah. So, you like to go ahead and, and begin your, your performance? Who? Michelle? You want me to go first right now? Can you hear me, Michelle? Yeah, I'm going to turn on my headphones. Great. Yeah. You say 15 minutes. 15 minutes of fame. You have 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay, though, you know, so if you go over, we'll forgive you. All right, you want to start, Michelle? Can you start, Michelle? Oh, I thought I thought somebody was introducing me. Okay, yeah. I will introduce you right now. Michelle Silver, <laughs> award-winning poet, and author of the Michelle. Hi, everybody. Hello. I can't see anybody, but I wanted to thank Lee and Kalampa for inviting me here tonight. I'm uh, very excited. And I am live from Mi'kmaq country. It's been an interesting time the last couple of weeks uh, with the fishers. Uh, fighting for our treaty rights. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to think about all the things that I've uh, been doing and writing about. And I think it's, um, I don't know, I think poetry, if you write, poetry is a timeless, timeless I guess. It's, there's no, uh, 
expiry date on poetry, even music, write something. And, you know, I, I think about Nina Simone when she sings her political songs and her songs resonate today as it, as it did in her day. Um, I've written some pieces that I wrote back in 2008 and it still resonates today. So I've been on this journey with my PhD and my PhD has brought some, um, brought me to a place where I needed to think about how I can be meaningful how my life, how my work can be meaningful to, to, to my people. And I decided to use the language as, a, as my medium and not only uh, the written language, but also the original written language. There's different forms of language. Uh, there's the ancient language that the settlers call petroglyphs. And then, but for us, it's our own written writing uh, system. And so I've had nights of trying to understand, you know, what could I do with my PhD as I went, I decided to walk into the, you know, the Institute of Higher Learning and real, I realized that I have an opportunity to expand on this existing uh, like historical uh, way of writing by bringing it into the modern context. So I, I published uh, the first Nigma hieroglyphic poetry book. And it's part of my uh, doctoral thesis where I'm using art uh, as a way to uh, bring about uh, language revitalization. I don't know about revitalization, it's probably a bad word to say. Um, more, I, I think uh, it's, it's about reawakening it and putting it into a more, uh, the way I see the world. And I, and as an artist, as a visual artist, as an interdisciplinary artist, I tend to work in mediums that uh, interest me and excites me. And you're actually very lucky. I should show you one of the, the whale bones that I carved the language in. I, I asked people who came into my studio one question. And this is all part of my dissertation. And when I was having a, a very difficult time shortly after my father died and back in 2017 and I was trying to decide, you know, how am I going to uh, develop and create an interesting or, you know, make this PhD meaningful. And one by one, my elders that were part of the historical discussion or the, the, the preservation of the language uh, were passing away, but like four of them passed away in one year. And they had been instrumental in my learning process. And I realized that they did the work they were meant to do, and that it was my turn to do the work that I meant to do because it needs to come out. And so my older brother uh, spotted a beached pilot whale and he said to me that it wasn't uh, finished working on this planet. They wanted to be uh, useful. And so we went to the beach and oddly enough, it's called Whale Cove. And we went to rescue the bones and so I spent some time with it. I spent three seasons with the with the with the whale, and I I didn't want to disrespect the whale because I thought it was a very uh, to me it's a special uh, ancestor, and so I made 
sure that whatever I, what I was going to do, I was going to uh, be mindful and be respectful of our ancestor. And so I waited and waited. And then one day I uh, turned on the news and in Victoria, in Victoria, British Columbia, uh, the, the orca whale uh, was carrying her dead calf and for 17 days I, I watched the news and 17 days I, re I, I, I kept thinking that I need to tell the whale's story and the whale's story needs to be told through the hieroglyphics and so I decided that I was going to talk about uh, and write uh, the impact climate change has on the whale's environment. And that was a very, uh, uh, very important uh, aha moment for me because uh, it meant that um, I was able to make that connection with the whale bone that uh, my brother and I rescued. And so in a spirit of collaboration, I asked people uh, one question. If you could tell the whale anything, what would you say? And they had to choose a, a hieroglyphic uh, uh, message. And then I, I carved those uh, messages. And then I um, uh, took one of the bones and carve the impact climate change has on the whale's environment. And it's, it's done a very, uh, the whale has really uh, given me a lot of uh, teachings. Across Canada, uh, it went to Newfoundland. Uh, it, uh, the first opening was here. And I was very lucky because uh, I wanted my, uh, my book to launch the same evening I was uh, launching the um, uh, the exhibition that I did with Alan Sliboy and Loretta Gould, and it was a, it was important for me to to connect the two because they were related, and the, my the book and the exhibition were connected, and and my elders that are alive, I wanted them to. Uh, be there and so everything happened uh, uh, serendipitously I guess I don't know the creator and the ancestors were working really hard behind the scenes and I, I believe that because everything meant to happen happened and it, it didn't happen without any uh, it, it was seamless and so uh, I'm very proud of the work because uh, it's teaching uh, the public uh, that we've had this language for a very long time. Um, I'm able to use it uh, in poetry. And so, and also introduce the work because I've been a poet for 30 years. And so I, I, I was very fortunate that the, the publisher was generous enough for me to include uh, my uh, manuscript from the last 30 years. And so uh, this book is a chapter in my dissertation. The whale bone oh. is, is um, there's four of them. So I carved uh, the, the messages on both sides and I, you can't really see it, it's really hard, but it's double-sided and I had a friend of mine who's a blacksmith create uh, a base, which is also um, I go as you will message would translate to it's great. So the well is great. 
this well is going to be uh, an exhibition. So that's this whole COVID business is uh, resolved. Um, it'll be exhibited for a year. So I wanted to, you know, when I heard that the title of this event was uh, Code for Change, that I think resonate. Uh, we'll get to my point. I think Tanya, your, your mic is on. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> This one is called self-preservation. Our most complicated image is self, towering above broken mirrors, waging wars along the riverbanks of confusion. Go ahead, read my mind with contentment. These endless sorrows of unresolved confinement repeatedly occurring are seemingly protecting this heart from unwanted desires. Quick, slash these restricted fields of tomorrow. Forgiveness once more. When I was uh, writing the hieroglyphics, I, I really wanted to, um, you know, in the, in the Mi'kmaq language, you, the, Everything is uh, verb-based, so it's action-oriented. So I wanted it to be meaningful um, uh, to what's going on today. And so, and I also wanted to, I, I often go back and forth between uh, the, the past, present, and future. And when you read the the Gomukhajui Gasigo, I describe it uh, within my, you know, I, I, I mean, writing for months now and I realized that in order for me to to learn the language uh, the written language I, I had to listen to my elders and I, when I was listening to my elders I, I recognized that there was a pattern in storytelling and the the pattern was about uh, the moment and and how we describe that moment. Uh, the other day, my best friend uh, got married, and I sat with her. I sat with her elders, and you know, one of them got cold because the wedding was outside. So I went to go get a shawl for her to wear, and her sister uh, described the shawl. Um, it, it. She didn't say shawl. She described what the shawl was going to do. And I thought, wow, that's a very interesting, like there was no description of the exact shawl. She just described what the shawl was going to do for her sister. And I thought this, that was a, to me, that was a uh, interesting way. Of, and I realized that I can connect that with the hieroglyphic language because it was about describing what was going on. Even in my poems, I, I tried to um, describe uh, that moment and or the moments that were occurring. And, and it was always what was happening in that moment. And so, uh, which is like, um, I think intensely how you think of things each day. And I wish I had this ability to show you. Um, I'm gonna try, uh, this is the, the language. Um, if you wanted to, uh, to see it, uh, you can get an ebook. It's available as an ebook now. And you can, you know, if you're tech savvy, you can just download it right now <laughs> and follow me. I remember, um, oh, I should, I should read this one. It's called Resurgent Hope. 
this uh, is a homage to my Hope sisters who wrote a book together. Hope is a vision of unknown circumstances, disguising itself on monuments of reconstructed monologues, seldom heard in public. Do not restrain, be heard. Feel the strength of Mother Earth's magnetic anomalies, renewing visions carefully placed alongside our common goals of survival. Listen to her drumbeats of collective sorrows, drumbeats of healing, soft pedal collisions we manage to uphold as a way of recognizing how we need to behave in this world. So, you know, in the last couple of weeks, I started to uh, witness uh, the dark side of humanity, as, as we all do when it comes to racism. And now that I'm teaching at an institution, I'm teaching at St. FX University, I'm, I'm feeling the pain uh, and frustration from my students because we're being, op we're, we're an open target. And it's it's hard it's hard to focus when you turn on the news or when you turn on social media and somebody uh, is threatening to to shoot you if they see you when they go hunting and you know and then a truckload of lobsters left for to die um when their argument is about conservation and it's like you've completely lost the support of everyone including your own but it I really wanted to, you know, I have a long poem for this, but there's no time. So what I'll do is uh, I'll read a small one. This one is uh, called Nugumich, and Nugumich is uh, grandmother. Tidal waves are coming in, answering a call from the four directions, north, west, east, south. Whisper our names to Nugumic as we offer up the medicines to our ancestors. Nurture our hearts, Nugumic, for the call of the wild beast inside has returned. We are not alert without your help. We are not clear without your guidance. When our defenses are down, we send word to the four elements, air, water, fire, earth, to save us from our internal custom craving for words that make us weak and make us strong. Replenish our thirst for knowledge, Nugumic. Light the fires, flame the signals, allow us to recharge with Mother Earth. And I, I really believe that this, this is what my people did because the, the protesters uh, are not, in the, are not uh, stealing and destroying our property right now. You know, never under, underestimate the power of prayer and when people come together uh, for the betterment of, of humanity and for survival, really. I mean, I think it's, uh, it really opened up a lot of people's eyes. Again, it's not the first fight, it won't be the last. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, things, uh, positive things will come out of it. Anyways, aha. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I don't wanna, I think I, Take, took up 20 minutes. <laughs> so thank you.